Yeah, well, I'm a mechanical engineering student um, in my third year um, where I am now, and I've sort of had an interesting path to where I've, of how I've got through my studies. I've spent a number of years sort of travelling the world do, with sport, which has been a huge privilege, but I've sort of come back to university and haven't really didn't really know where I was going to go with it. I mean, it's been pointed out in mechanical engineering, you know, you're just going to sit behind a desk and do um, calculations and HVAC work um, all day, every day, and that really didn't appeal to me. But the, th the thing that really stood out when it came to sustainability in the climate was when I went to a, a lecture uh, at the University of Adelaide where um, the Lord Mayor came and spoke about his experiences and how he got to where he was today in trying to take Adelaide to be the first carbon neutral city in the world. And that really just hit home as something that was just like, that's what I want to do, I want to be a part of that. And I guess the climate and that sort of thing has always sort of been in the back of my mind as something that I grew up on a farm in a rural, rural setting, so that's always been sort of a part of my blood. But to actually find a path that it can apply to and your studies can apply to was just life changing for me really. And from there I've got involved with academics and mentors and just the world has just opened up. I mean, I've found a new passion for my study and you actually just really want to get involved and make a difference in the world. I mean I've had the chance now to travel um, overseas a number of times with uni for conferences, meet the most incredible people and work on projects that I would just have never ever thought I'd have the chance to work on with some of the biggest names around the world and it's just really a humbling experience but it's just changed everything about my study and I could not implore anyone like highly enough to get involved with sustainability because it is just the focus point of the world for the coming decades. So, yeah. So you said you grew up in the farm? <laughs> yes, I did. I sort of had a very farming background um, on Kangaroo Island in South Australia. I spent most, most of my childhood there and I think that was sort of a bit of a connection to the land was just a huge, huge part of who I am today and I'm really thankful for that. Um, it just sort of honed in all those things about what climate change is doing and the struggles that our rural communities really do have um, and that sort of just from there going into my engineering degree has just been a huge focal point so to sort of start linking that in has been has just made it really personal and that's something that uh, just you gets you passionate about what you do. So maybe you could also tell us some interesting people that you've met. Uh, you mentioned some <laughs> people in general, but then maybe yeah. you could say, describe some of them. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, we've sort of just even just getting involved with like the Lord Mayor and the people from the government in South Australia and the councils. We have Gunter Pauli, an international sustainability entrepreneur, has been at the university. Skype calls with people like Hunter Lovins from the Rocky Mountain Institute, and it's just incredible experience and then not just that but just the mentors I've managed to have that local mentors in Adelaide um, who just have the experience and the passion and want to help you get to your highest potential is just incredible. And how do you think uh, you can uh, well, uh, encourage uh, other people, young people like you to, <laughs> to, to develop an interest in this, in this kind of project? I think you just got to stay as true to yourself as you can and you just got to find an area that interests you because I mean sustainability applies to everything we do as a species so if you can find what you're passionate in and really get involved and just drill that then it, you're, you're going to love what you do and you're going to become the best at what you do as well. And do you truly believe there's a future to farming in Australia? <laughs> That's an interesting question. There has to be on some level, but not the way we do it now. You have to think smarter and do things smarter. And I look at Gunter Pauli as an example when he says you really just do need to innovate and think outside the box. You just can't, we can't go with the, the practices that we've used for so many years because they just aren't going to apply anymore, especially when like the pressures that we're putting on the world, um, how we are with population growth and things like that. We need to start thinking differently and doing things differently. Um, but it's still possible, yes. And how has this experience uh, well, uh, encouraged you to change some of your lifestyle? <laughs> it, it has uh, it encouraged me to change it a lot. I mean, I look back at doing a 24-hour sort of hackathon event around um, our city's carbon neutral plan, and I mean, going from that, I was sort of starting to develop a small startup surrounding single-use waste um, um, products, trying to reduce that. And I mean, I would never have ever thought about that being a possibility for me even like less than a year ago and it's just really all those little things that you just don't really 
think about before, all the things you take for granted, you start to realise what impact they have and what the follow-on effects are from those things. So you're going to um, well, Yeah, so yeah, when it came to the moving away from that sort of normal engineering path, I guess, towards sustainability. I mean, my family was so supportive of that. They were all for it and they thought it was a great idea. I mean, like they've both come from sort of a farming background too, so they sort of know the hardships that that goes through and they're very switched on about sort of the environment and, and those sort of things. I guess it's a, is or has been a hot topic in Australia for a long time. Um, so they were, they were really, really supportive of that. And of course, the jobs and the, the possibilities um, in that sort of area, uh, they really are just endless. I mean, I personally didn't really know too much about it looking just over a year ago, but as soon as you start actually focusing on and realizing that sustainability is everywhere, it's just everything opens up and you realize that it really has links in every sort of job you do. No, no, even if it's not in the job title, it is linked in there intrinsically. And I know one of my colleagues has said, like in the future, ideally you'd say there won't be any specific sustainability jobs because every job will be around sustainability and it will just be a part of it. So that's why it's just so important. Yes. Maybe um, speak from the point of view of to us being a bit mm. privileged Western world. Yeah. What your experience was like on your trip to Cambodia and just from yeah. a moment. Yeah. How you think that you can do some transfer, how you think we can start to come together globally mm. to, to improve the quality of life for those that, uh, that really desperately need it. I mean, we grew up very privileged. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, how, what was the experience for you as a student like being able to share some of that? Mm. Yeah. All of your knowledge into that community? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah so, so spending time in Cambodia with Engineers Without Borders was really just an eye-opening experience, I guess, seeing the difference between like, how we grew up in a very privileged and Western world compared with how the developing nations are sort of just struggling by at the moment um, was really eye-opening for me. And I know, especially with the effects of things like climate change, that's only going to be worse for them rather than us in the short term. So really just getting people to work together and understand those issues that are happening and might not be obvious to people in like in our society in our western society um, but you really just need to get them involved and and open that up and really try and work together to solve the problems before it becomes becomes even worse than it is Sorry, like and what are your thoughts on us being able to achieve that I mean, there's a lot of, yeah there's a lot of poverty there's a lot of like Mm. Lack of access to clean water and sanitation, and mm. food, and corruption, and all mm. of this stuff. I mean, yeah. Do you think do you think we can come together to to solve that as a group? Yeah. Yeah, like without a doubt, definitely. I mean, there are times when you think, yeah, how do you manage to to do that? I mean, it's it's a global problem, and you need everyone to come together. But I guess the biggest sort of hope or glimmer of hope that was when the Paris Agreement was ratified, with almost every nation in the world actually agreeing to come together on climate change was just an incredible moment. Even putting that agreement aside, just the fact that almost the entire world will work together on one issue because they know it's in their best interest is a huge step forward. And I think with that sort of mentality going forward on all those issues, I mean, we can do incredible things and it, it can happen. It's just gonna take a lot of work.